So welcome back friends. If I were to ask you to choose 50 tools that you could only have 50 for the entire rest of your life to cover every possible situation that you might run into from home repair to contracting to working on your car, working on equipment, what would you choose? I think this is really an interesting question because I just finished reading a book, uh, it was a fiction a story, and there was a blacksmith that had to flee a town. And he had, he had multiple generations of tools. Uh, you know, a blacksmith, the more that they work and the, the, mo the more the family business continues, of course the tools grow and grow and grow. That's kind of how you could tell the success of a blacksmith or how much experience they had by the qu quantity of their tools. And, and in the story, he had to take just a few because they had to flee into the wilderness. So it was interesting, the choices that he made. And I thought, I got to thinking about that. And I thought, I'm going to give myself that challenge. If I could narrow it down, if I could only have 50, which ones would I choose? So this is a part one of a five part video series we're going to be doing. And we're going to go over the first 10. Now, these are not in any specific order, but they're just randomly plucked out of a list that I came up with. Just thinking back through my lifetime of experience, what are the tools that I always grab? What are the things that are always in my hand? What are the things that I just can't live without? These are very broad. They're not going to be real specific tools. I'm not, and the tools maybe for a, a farmer, a homesteader might be different than someone who lives in the suburbs or close in the cities. So what this is, is this is an all arounder encompassing everything that I could possibly thinking, think of, but keeping it under 50. The other thing that might be kind of encouraging um, uh, for this is a lot of guys uh, are, are intimidated and in about, man, how, how it's going to take me forever. It's going to take me a lifetime to put together a proper toolkit. That's not true. If you were to purchase two of these a month in, in what, two years, you could have what I would consider to be a very, very respectable set of tools where you could do just about anything you wanted to do. So I will uh, we'll do the 10 today. Um, all down in the subject, I'll also put my some recommendations. I'm not going to be choosing the top of the line. I'm not going to be choosing the bottom of the line. I'm going to be choosing tools that I think are a great value, that are going to give a lifetime of service uh, if taken care of. And, and they're just are, are not going to be overly expensive. I'm not specking out snap on tools. This is an all around. This is a common man's toolkit. All right, so let's just jump into it. Number one, and not in no particular order here, is a sledgehammer. A sledgehammer. I'll just share a quick story with you. My granddad, uh, of course, you know, he came back from World War II uh, and got a GI loan. Him and his brother were both uh, in World War II in the in the uh, in the European theater. And they, uh, uh, at an auction, if I have memory serves, uh, they bought uh, an old government building. Um, my granddad and, and his brother took everything apart. They saved all the glass, they saved all the windows, they saved the nails, the screws, the doors, the hardware, and they built themselves both a home from scratch by taking this old building apart um, that my parents uh, still own today. Amazing story. But uh, granddad decided years ago that he wanted a basement. He didn't have the money or the wherewithal or the, or the ability to put a basement in when we first built it. And so he went about digging a basement and he dug it by hand. And where we grew up, there is a, there's a lot of boulders and they're huge boulders. A lot of folks say that they came from the Missoula floods, massive, massive boulders. And of course he ran into several of these. And he would go down there every night after work with his sledgehammer and he would start swinging and hitting those boulders and breaking them into pieces small enough that he could carry out on his own. Um, just a funny story, but a, a sledgehammer, about a 10 pounder like this, is a, an indispensable tool. From demolition, it can be used, pressed into service as, a, as, a, as an anvil, uh, it can be used um, uh, for persuading things. It could be used for breaking rocks. I mean, if you had to g dig a hole and it was a must, a well or, or whatever, how would you get through a rock but the hammer like this? So what my recommendation would be, you know, is I'm not a huge fan of composite handles, but there's some really good ones like this Wilton right here that I've had for 20 years totally abused it that has a steel handle inside with a good heavy rubber coating and this has been an awesome awesome hammer and the reason why of course wood is nicer to strike with but wood is fragile uh, and if you're not really into upkeep and taking care of your tools and you know you have a tendency maybe to leave something out from time to time or it's going to be riding around the back of your truck 
a better option is to go with a synthetic uh, handle, providing it's a good one and a high quality one. So sledgehammer is number one. Number two is a pair of side cutters. Side cutters, um, just your garden variety side cutters are going to be uh, useful in so many ways. Anytime you want to cut some sort of wire, you know, wire is hard to cut or nipping off the ends of bolts or, or just a million different things. You could even take these out and you can prune with them. You can do gardening with them. You can cut uh, barbed wire, fencing, uh, I, I can't hold things. I can't even tell you how important a good pair of side cutters is. And I would go with this size, you know, not the little tiny like the electronics dykes or the great big nippers, but something about this size right here is a great option and a, and a must have a good pair of side cutters. Next is going to be a chalk box. A chalk box is one of those tools that's really interesting. If you ever get some time, uh, you can go back and see how many years, uh, thousands of years, uh, carpenters and men have been using this idea of a string line and chalk box. I mean, there's even talk about the plumb line uh, in the Old Testament in the Bible uh, as a rule of measurement and something that's always consistent, something you can count on. So a, a chalk box and string line, or chalk box does many different things, more than just one. So if you're not familiar with it, it's, it's essentially a string line that hooks on the end of a board and then it's coated with chalk and then you can pull tension on it and snap it and it makes a perfectly straight line that you can follow. Really handy for cutting sheet goods, plywood, that sort of thing. But also, it's, it's a plumb bob. Uh, if you need to determine, you know, if you're going to lay out, for example, can lighting or, or something overhead and you're trying to you know, you, it's not realistic to try to measure on a ceiling. So what will typically be done is you'll lay something out on the floor. Okay, I want a light here, here, here. And you can hang this right on. And the reason why it's this shape right here is it comes to this point right there. So you can use it like a plumb bob. Go down and transfer that mark to the top. And a third option you get is you get a string line. You know, if you're doing bricks or you want to uh, do a, a straight line for doing a ledger on something, you can just simply just use it as a string line. It's not super long. It's probably 50 feet or so in here, but they are, um, they're just a wonderful tool. The old standby are the straight line chalk reels made in USA. They're, they used to be. The all metal ones. I, I'm, I have lots of the two speed ones real and faster. I've got lots of the other high speed ones. And what I have found is that all of those, they just fail and they don't work. And I end up going back to this one, which probably belonged to my dad. So it's been around a long time. So I'm a big fan of these. They're not the fastest or not the, the high, most high tech, but they are very consistent and very reliable and very affordable. So number three would be a chalk line. Uh, number four, number four is going to be a small putty knife. Just uh, not a super thick one. Uh, you know, I had to make a decision whether I wanted a flexible putty knife or more of a, a thicker one like I use for scraping gaskets off of things. And I didn't have the ability to choose two. So if I could only have one, I'm going to take the thinner one, more of a painter style. Oh, this is just uh, uh, used for so many things. For cleaning glass off, you can use it for, as I said, scraping gaskets, for scraping stuff, for patching holes and, and puttying things, and just a million things that I, I, I can't possibly think of. Um, I like the hides. I've got three of these. I'll see if I can find these if they're on Amazon and put those in there. But a putty knife with about a one inch, is that about a one inch or so? Let's say, yeah, it's probably about a one inch, maybe inch and a quarter, uh, is needs to be in the kit and it's just useful for a bazillion, bazillion different things. So number four is, uh, is a one inch putty knife. Number five is going to be screwdriver. Now I went back and forth with, should I include like a full screwdriver set? But uh, you know, I, I'm trying to really keep it narrowed down and basic. And I thought the reality of it is, is the four, these four in one screwdrivers are actually quite good. I mean, there's some really cheap, some really junky ones, uh, but there's also some, some really good ones. Um, I think of Klein makes a really good one. This one here is kind of an intermediate, but I, what I find is I have full sets of snap-on screwdrivers, but when I'm typically grabbing one, I'm looking for this one. This is one that I keep in my go-to toolbox because it's four screwdrivers in one. I've got a number one Phillips. I've got a number two Phillips. I've got a small uh, number two, or 
a regular and, a, and just a standard straight blade. So I've got four screwdrivers in one. And not only that, but you get a, when if you take these out, you get a 5 16 uh, driver, which is a really common size nut uh, for like if you're taking the panel off the back of your dryer. So you get, so you basically you get five tools in one with this. And, and I like them. Um, they're not the best screwdriver in the world, but they will really work good and you get so much in one little package. So I'm going to go with a four in one screwdriver is going to be, what's that number five. All right, I'm going to try to feature a power tool in each one of these videos as well, because there's some power tools. I have a lot of them, um, but most of them are kind of specialized, but there's a very few of them that are not that I use all the time. And there's three of them. The first one is I'm going to recommend is, is a good is a jigsaw. You just can't hardly get away or get by without one. Now this tool kit that I'm putting together, this is, this is not just for tinkerers. This is not just for a simple DIY. With this tool kit, you could build your house. You, you really could build a house with it. And so when I got to thinking about that, if I could only have 50, uh, I can't live without it. I can't live without a, a jigsaw. Um, I would probably recommend staying away from the cordless ones if, unless you're a trades guy. What I, what I find is I don't really need this. Th this is kind of specialized and I don't need it over here and I don't need it over there. I'm going to be setting up saw horses and I'm going to be using it at a work area where I'm cutting lots of sheet goods. The jigsaw is going to give you the ability to, to do scroll work, to cut anything that's at like an inside, like a piece of plywood. If you want to cut a square out of it, or if you want to cut a radius or a circle out of something or a curve in something, you just can't do it with hardly any other saw. It's either this or a coping saw and a coping saw is just not practical if you're cutting out windows for sheeting or something like that. So I'm going to recommend a corded jigsaw brands. You know, any of the premium brands, I'd probably stay away from Ryobi, Black & Decker, Skill, those sorts of things, and stick with some of the better brands. Um, Milwaukee, uh, DeWalt, um, Porter Cable, uh, Makita, th those sorts. But all uh, uh, th this is, is a must-have. Uh, you just really can't live without it. Uh, electric jigsaw corded. All right, you're also going to need a pair of vice grips. And I'd go with the regular size. This is the normal size that you're going to see, the average size, uh, the one that I, I have all sizes. I've got the little tiny ones, which kind of seem like a good idea when you think about it, but they're, they're silly. I, I actually hardly ever use them. And whenever I do use them, they're, they fail and I end up going and getting the big ones anyway. Get the Vice Grip brand. Get the Vice Grip brand. Don't, don't get any knockoff stuff. Just stick with, stick with the original ones. These are an essential tool. And this is usually a tool that you're going to be used to get you out of trouble. Uh, when you um, round off a bolt or you strip something out or, or there's just something really small that you, you can't get a wrench on that you need to get a hold of, it is the only tool. The, the, the vice grip will save the day on a million different things. Or if you're dealing with something that's hot, if you have to heat something up or you want to clamp on something and, and use it, or you have something that might spin on you in a drill press like that. The vice grip, I can't even go into all of the ways that the vice grip uh, is, is essential, but uh, there's no question that I would not ever have a, a kit uh, without a pair of these. So the original vice grip brand in the standard size. No, don't go with the needle nose ones, all those silly ones. Uh, those have, have their roles, but for an all arounder, this is the one you want. All right, what do we got? Seven, seven, eight, seven, here's seven or eight. Uh, a set of drill bits. And you don't need to have a massive set of drill bits. What do, does it for most guys uh, is a set like this right here. So this is just a, just a standard DeWalt set here. These are not the best drill bits. They're not the worst either, uh, but they get by and they can be sharpened. And these sizes go from, I would say at the minimum, a one eighth to a half inch. If you could get a, a variety of drill bits and you don't have to have this many, you can get kits that have probably a third less than this, which will get you by. You don't, I mean, we're not drilling and tapping and we're doing really specific machinist type of work. We just want to drill some holes, whether it be in the two by four for a lag bolt uh, or a piece of metal, it's got to be a good all around set of drill bits. So your eighth inch to half inch set uh, is going to be, I think for most guys is going to get it done. Um, if I could only have one, 
that's what I would get. Um, half, anything bigger than a half inch hole, um, you know, we're just, with this tool set, we're not really gonna have the means, the ability to be drilling three quarter, one inch holes into steel. Um, and anything bigger than a half inch, if we need to do a one inch hole with care, we can do in wood and metal. We can, we can get metal blades for this. Uh, we can do with care with the jigsaw. So we'll say an eighth inch to half inch set of drill bits. Number nine, this was a tough one. This one gave me a lot of trouble trying to determine what the best size is going to be is a crescent wrench or an adjustable spanner. As our friends in the UK say, is that what you call it? A spanner, adjustable spanner, a, a crescent wrench. Oh, they come in all different sizes from little tiny baby key ring ones to great big ones that you can put on a two inch trailer ball nut. You know, I, I've got all of those, but if I could only have one, only have one, we're not talking about heavy industrial here, I'm gonna go with an eight inch crescent wrench because the eight inch gives you, you the ability to go up to one inch. I mean, you're really pressing it strength wise to, to, to get a whole lot of pressure on a one inch nut, but you can do it. You know, you can do it and you can get it, open it up to that size. And the reason why I didn't go with a great big one is the big ones are just too unwieldy for all around stuff. So what the eight inch wrench allows you to do is it gives you the ability to, to do smaller work. If you're working on like a quarter inch bolt, uh, it's fine enough that you can get into reasonably tight areas and you can deal with that or five eighths, three quarter, it's still big enough that with a little bit of help and gently tapping on a hammer, you can usually get things done. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go with a high quality eight inch crescent wrench uh, is gonna be number nine. Um, for a kit. And number 10, 10 or five videos, man, there's so much to talk about, is going to be a good quality set of just your standard garden variety pliers. Um, now, one thing you want to look for in your pliers is get a, get a, a, the bigger ones. You know, they make, there's some little tiny silly ones, but these are going to be a really important tool. And sometimes these are the tool that are, save the day. It's something that you can throw in your back pocket that you always have and to have a, a pair that's a little bit bigger uh, to me is worth it because you get more clamping pressure and you can just get bigger stuff on it. You know, of course, these have a slip joint to them, you know, so they're kind of, you can, you can do smaller stuff or you can open up the slip joint and you can get bigger you know, clamp on bigger things, like if you had a half inch pipe nipple or something and the good ones will have nice sharp teeth on the inside here. Uh, so you can bite onto things, kind of like a, a, a poor man's pipe wrench for small detail work. But that comes in very handy. Those teeth really, really work well. But this is a tool that would be impossible to go out, uh, go without. Uh, from grabbing things, again, you cut, take a combination of these two together, you can do a lot of work with them. You can, you can solve a lot of problems. Uh, you can hold hot material. You know, if you're doing some impromptu blacksmithing, you know, <laughs> on your... On your uh, your 10 pound mall anvil, um, you know, these are, these are essentially can be tongs. I mean, before I had tongs, I used them for dealing, working with hot metal all the time. Um, they are an essential tool and just something that I could not live without, live without. Okay. So that rounds it up. Just a quick recap. We've got the good quality, large size pliers. We've got a corded electric jigsaw. We've got an H eight inch crescent wrench. We've got a four-in-one screwdriver, Phillips and flat blade. We've got a high one inch, inch and a quarter or so putty knife. We've got a chalk box, good high quality pair of side cutters, good high quality set of name brand vice grip, vice grips, one inch, one eighth to half inch drill bit set. And of course, a good quality, super durable, 10 pound or better sledgehammer, mall, sledgehammer. Yeah, sledgehammer. All right, thanks for watching. We'll uh, see you guys on the second part. We'll get into the next 10, it'll be five part video, uh, but I will put down in the subject heading my choices for these. So there'll be some really good ideas for Christmas gifts. And let's, you know, even think about it. Say to yourself, okay, so I, I'm, a, I'm a young guy. I, I don't have a lot of tools. I want to put together a good kit. Um, if you bought one of these a month, 
You know, it wouldn't take in just a matter of just a few years, you would have a very respectable set uh, of tools. And anyone who knew anything about tools when they came over and they were going to help you with the project or, or do something, they would probably be able to do just about anything they need needed to do with this set. So that's it. All right. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you guys on the next video.